record myself and see if I said anything good. <laughs> Probably not, but just impossible. It's possible. Okay, um, what should you eat and when after the mini gastric bypass? Well, I want to say the positive things first before I get to the negatives. You know, it's kind of, there's, there are jokes where you tell good news and bad news. Okay, so the good news is that months and months afterwards, years after the surgery, you can eat almost anything you want. So steak and lobster and salads and ice cream and cookies, all those things are going to be on your menu after the surgery. <coughs> not right away, but later. Okay? But having said that, that's not exactly true. It's kind of when you go to the car lot and you want to buy a new car and you ask the salesman about the car, the first thing he does is tell you the good things. Okay, so that sounded pretty good, what I said, right? It's kind, of, it's kind of true. But there's a little bit of a kind of a, a gotcha. There are a couple of things to tell you about. First of all, right after the surgery, Thursday night after your surgery, Friday, and the coming week after your surgery, you can't have lobster and steak and ice cream and no, cookies. Yeah, 24 things. Yeah. Then I'm going to be able to have. Yeah. So you have the soup the and soup the yogurt and the, yogurt and the Gatorade and the and liquids. And crackers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So those things are until you heal. Mm -hmm. Okay. After you heal, though, you can eat almost anything. But again, there is a gotcha. There is an issue. There is a problem with the surgery. Mm -hmm. The surgery has many benefits. We hope to take away diabetes. We hope to take away um, joint pains and arthritis. We hope to take away um, headaches. We hope to take away high blood pressure. And the list goes on of all the good things. But there's one big bad thing with the surgery. One major complication, which is just like aspirin, it causes ulcers. Okay, so causing ulcers is a big, dangerous complication of our surgery. And we don't like that. We're apologizing ahead of time, but we know that the surgery in some patients can lead to gastritis or an ulcer. And we also know how to prevent it. We know that we're like aspirin. You know, aspirin can cause ulcers. Aspirin can cause GI bleeding, it's called. Mm -hmm. So can we. But we don't want you to get an ulcer. We don't want you to get GI bleeding. And we know how to protect you. The way to protect your stomach <laughs> is to do some things that we have in the manual that you referred to. And that is, first of all, eat a healthy diet. Fresh fruits and vegetables and whole wheat food, those are good choices. Sure. So the first thing we can do to help protect against ulcers is eat a healthy diet. And a healthy diet is kind of what we all know, fresh fruit, vegetables, um, whole wheat foods, things like that. Yogurt helps protect against ulcers. Yogurt, because of the good bacteria, the lactobacillus in yogurt, Farm. Yes, so good choice. Left. Yes, and we, in fact, we recommend a little yogurt every day because it has a good bacteria in it. There's another bacteria, a bad bacteria, called Helicobacter pylori, which has been shown to cause ulcers. And by fighting that bad bacteria with good bacteria, we can help protect you from the complications of the mini gastric bypass. There are some other things we recommend. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't drink alcohol. Don't drink soda pop. Okay, I don't do any of those. I just and don't drink coffee. coffee. No. And don't drink coffee. <laughs> no. Decaf. Decaf. It's not the caffeine. Ah, for life. Well, that's what we recommend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, then, uh, and the reason is I don't, and I don't like to say this. I love. Drink a coffee a day. Yeah. That's well, we. I love coffee in America. You know, we have Starbucks, right? I, I live in Starbucks. Okay. Well, I love to go to Starbucks. I'm there every day. I, I go to Starbucks, <laughs> and I want, I want to order coffee in Starbucks when I go in there. But I am filled with deep sadness because I have to order green tea. 
Do you have a gastrogen? No, but it's good for all of us. Yeah, coffee, not so much. Now, coffee's, coffee's not terrible, but you don't want an ulcer, and green tea is good. Green tea is okay to drink? Green tea is wonderful. Oh, okay. I just hate going into Starbucks and smelling the coffee and having to drink green tea. <laughs> they say, what's wrong? I said, give me a green tea. Well, why are you so angry? I like green tea. What well, other herbal teas fine too, though? Well, we don't know. You know, I think that it's interesting. You know, is chamomile good? Is rose hips? Is, uh, you know, here's, here's the funny thing. They have looked at black, regular black tea, you know, iced tea, and it's not as good as green tea, which again makes me angry. But I'm just reporting the research. And one of the things I said yesterday is I talked about why I'm good to come and see. Well, hopefully, because I do a lot of surgeries, I'm good at cutting and sewing. Good morning. Good morning. Come in the house. She went to the attic. We didn't know how to get that. That's all right. So they have studied green tea and black tea. Now, do you know the difference between green tea and black tea? They're the same tea leaf, it's just how long they're processed. They're the same. Same. But there are numerous research studies where they found green tea is effective in different things and black tea not so much, which I don't like. But green tea, for example, helps kill that bad bacteria, Helicobacter pylori. Mm -hmm. Coffee? No. Green tea? Yes. So I could drink the green tea within two weeks after the surgery? You can drink it today and tomorrow and the next day, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So I apologize. Sorry. You yeah. Apologize. Hello. Hello. What? Uh, it's very good to drink green tea. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. So does that answer that question? Yes. Okay, good. 